how are you i hope you all are doing your homework and following the timetable provided by school do your homework at home i will check it when school will open and also follow the school timetable strictly that is for you i hope you are fit as always now we will start our chapter okay so students in previous video of chapter 1 we discussed about matter what is matter everything in this universe is made up of material which is known as matter matter is anything which occupies mass and space it is a collection of lots of tiny particles and the particles of the matter continuously move so we have discussed it this in previous video today we will discuss further ahead first topic is states or you can say forms of matter on the basis of physical states all the matter can be classified into three groups solids liquids and gases solid examples are rock iron wood ice sand while liquid liquid is water milk oil petrol alcohol and gases as you know air steam oxygen so these are the three states of matter solid liquid gas in other word you can say matter exists in three physical states solid liquid and gas and these three forms of matter have different properties so we will discuss the properties of these three forms before discussing the properties we must know some terms the first is rigidity see what is rigidity it is difficult to change the shape for example solids are rigid why the particles in solids are very closely packed and there are very strong forces of attraction between the particles of solids that is why solids have high rigidity while as compared to solid liquid and gases are not so rigid because the particles have less force of attraction than solids then next term is fluidity what is fluidity it is the property of flowing for example water can flow or spread over a given surface due to the large interparticle distance and very weak force of attraction gases flow extremely easily so the flowing property in gases are more than liquids while solids do not flow the next is compressibility it means a matter can be reduced to a lower volume on application of force that means volume decreases when pressure is applied the particle in gases have large spaces between them due to which their volume decrease when pressure is applied so gases are highly compressible on the other hand the particles in solids and liquids are closely packed so solids and liquids do not have much compressibility as compared to gas the next term is density density is mass per unit volume of a material that is it indicates that mass in a unit volume higher density means more mass is present in a lesser volume gases have lowest density because their particles are very far apart and solids have higher densities okay students now we will discuss the properties of solids liquids and gases as you can see the table is given for the properties of solids liquids and gases the first property is shape solids have fixed shape for example brick is a solid and it has fixed shape liquids they do not have fixed shape they take the shape of container in which they are placed similarly 
gases they do not have fixed shape they take the shape of the container in which they are placed now what about the volume second property is volume solids have fixed volume liquids have fixed volume while gases do not have fixed volume property third is compressibility compressibility as you know the volume is decreases by applying the pressure so solids cannot be compressed because their particles are very closely packed and held by strong intermolecular force liquids can be compressed to a little extent and gases can be easily compressed that means they are decreases to a small volume by applying pressure number 4 fluidity fluidity means flow so solids have no fluidity nil fluidity they cannot flow liquids flow from higher level to lower level they can flow gases flow in all direction easily the number 5 is intermolecular force it is maximum in solids that is why they are rigid they have fixed shape liquids have in between intermolecular force that is less than solids and more than gases while the gases have minimum intermolecular force that is why they flow easily in all direction because their particles have less intermolecular force now based on these properties you have activity problem first activity problem is collect the following articles a pen a book a needle and a piece of thread sketch the shape of above articles in your notebook by moving a pencil around them you have four questions related to this activity number 1 do all these have a definite shape distinct boundary and a fixed volume question 2 what happens if they are hammered pulled or dropped question 3 are these capable of diffusing into each other and question 4 try compressing them by applying force are you able to compress them so these are the four question you have to answer it in your notebook then there is another activity collect the following water cooking oil milk juice and a cold drink containers of different shapes put a 50 ml mark on these containers using a measuring cylinder from the laboratory or you can take uh, any glass and mark it question what will happen if these liquids are split on the floor number 2 measure 50 ml of any one liquid and transfer it into different containers one by one does the volume remain the same third does the shape of the liquid remain the same and fourth when you pour the liquid from one container into another does it flow easily so this activity has also four questions you have to answer these questions in your notebook okay students next topic is diffusion the mixing of one substance with another substance due to the motion of particles is called diffusion it occurs in all three forms of matter solids gas gases and liquids it is very fast in gas and very slow in solid we will discuss the diffusion in all three forms first we will discuss about diffusion in gases the example is mixing of perfume in air when someone opens a bottle of perfume in one corner of room it smells spreads in the whole room how it is because due to the diffusion of perfume vapors into the air the vapors of perfume mix in the air and reaches to the every corner of the room so you can smell it in each corner of the room similarly if you burn an incense stick you can smell it that is also the same the burning of incense stick produce gases 
which mix with air and reaches to the every corner of the room now we have diffusion in liquids the example is mixing or spreading of ink in water if a drop of ink is put into a glass of water then ink spreads into the whole water of the glass the spreading of ink in water on its own is called diffusion of ink particles into the water in previous video we discussed an example of potassium permanganates when potassium when two or three crystals of potassium permanganate dissolved in a beaker the purple color appears so that was also an example of diffusion in diffusion of potassium permanganate particles into the water then diffusion in solids it is very very slow process example if we write something on a blackboard and leave it uncleaned for few days we will find that it is quite difficult to clean the blackboard why the reason is the particles of the chalk have diffused into the surface of the blackboard so the diffusion of a solid substance into another solid substance is slow process it takes many days or many years it is so slow that many people think the diffusion does not take place in solids at all i give you another example if you take two metal blocks and bound them together tightly and left them undisturbed for few years you will find after years that the particles of one metal have diffused into the another metal so it is a very slow process in solids now we have our next topic common and si units of temperature si unit of temperature is kelvin and the symbol is capital k and there is another unit which is common unit degree celsius for degree celsius we have symbol degree written with capital c 0 degree celsius is equal to 273 kelvin so the relation between degree celsius and kelvin is 0 degree celsius is equal to 273 kelvin the melting point of ice on kelvin scale is 273 kelvin while on degree celsius it is 0 degree celsius so relation between kelvin scale and celsius scale can be written in equation form s you can see here temperature in kelvin t k in brackets is equal to temperature t degree celsius in brackets plus 273 here t is in kelvin and t is in degree celsius so relation between these two temperature scale is as given now we will solve one example convert 25 degree celsius into kelvin scale you have temperature in degree celsius and you have to convert it into kelvin scale so how will do it see we will write first the formula t k is equal to t in degree celsius plus 273 we have value of temperature in degree celsius we will place it here instead of t degree celsius we will write 25 and we will add it with 273 now the temperature in kelvin is 298 kelvin based on this formula you have to solve these two you have to convert to celsius scale these kelvin temperatures first is 300 kelvin and the second is 573 kelvin you have to solve this you have to convert these temperatures to degree celsius so students 
that's it for today thank you thank you very much